Hello, and welcome to season two of Dentistry Support, the podcast with your host, the kind-hearted and infectious Sarah Beth Herman. We're back for a new season and ready to pack a punch. In every episode, we'll be sharing you quick, impactful insights into the challenges our dental community and leaders in all industries face. Expect a little bit of flair, a few laughs, and you might even recognize a friend or two. Because of you, we are the number one podcast in dentistry and number one in management and business. And we couldn't be more excited to keep bringing you practical wisdom and leadership with a servant's heart. All delivered in just enough time for your commute or morning team huddle. We're glad you're here. So let's get into it. Please welcome your host, Sarah Beth. Do you ever find yourself questioning if you really deserve the success you've achieved? Maybe it's not just your own thoughts or doubts, but perhaps the people around you have made you feel guilty for your accomplishments, leading you to question your own worth. Have you ever looked back at a time when you doubted yourself, but only realized it later? These aren't just random thoughts. These are signs of something deeper that even the most successful leaders have struggled with. It's called imposter syndrome, and it's more common than you think. If you don't know if you've ever experienced imposter syndrome, I want you to think about these next few questions. Have you ever wondered if you're truly capable of maintaining the success you've earned, or if it's just a matter of time before it all unravels? Do you find yourself comparing your success to others, feeling like somehow you're less deserving? Have you ever hesitated to celebrate your own achievements because you're worried what others will think, or that they might think you're bragging, or that you don't deserve it? Do you sometimes feel like you're playing a role? rather than truly being the person others see you as? Welcome back to the show. I'm Sarah Beth Herman, your host. And today we're tackling a topic that's real for so many of us, imposter syndrome. I happen to believe imposter syndrome is the one thing that holds back so many people from being who they were designed perfectly to be. This can be anything from a new management role that you never get to the next level of management. Or while you're in that role, you just can't get your team to excel beyond where they're at right now because you're stuck right where you are, suffering an imposter syndrome. And my goal today is to teach you to recognize where that is, honor how your body is trying to protect you, equip you with the tools to help you move forward, and recognize that you were made exactly for this. This is your time to be a leader. You got the job on purpose. You've been here for a while. This is your team. You belong. Whether you're leading a small team or a large organization, those nagging feelings of self-doubt can creep in, making you question your worth and your abilities. In this episode, we're learning what imposter syndrome is, why it happens, and most importantly, how to overcome it. Because addressing this isn't just important for your peace of mind. It's one of the most important things you can do for effective leadership, for team morale, and for your overall well-being. Did you know that an estimated 70% of people experience imposter syndrome at some point in their careers? That's according to a study by the International Journal of Behavioral Science. And it's not just beginners who feel this way. In fact, a survey found that 62% of business leaders admit to struggling with feelings of inadequacy despite their achievements. These numbers show us that imposter syndrome is far more common than we might think, affecting professionals at every single level. So what exactly is imposter syndrome? It's that persistent feeling of self-doubt and the fear of being exposed as a fraud. Even when you have plenty of evidence of your success, you might, struggle, you might struggle to internalize it, attributing your achievements to luck, timing, or external factors rather than your own skills or hard work. Let's take a moment to reflect on your experiences. Do you find yourself downplaying your successes, thinking it was just good timing or good luck? Are you constantly worried that others will discover that you are not as competent as they believe? Do you hesitate to take on new challenges because you're afraid of failing? Imposter syndrome isn't just a feeling. 
It can have real tangible effects on your leadership. It can lead to decision-making paralysis where you hesitate to make bold choices out of fear of failure. Or it might drive you to micromanage, doubting your team's ability to succeed without your constant oversight. This behavior doesn't just affect you. It can lead to burnout for your team and stifle creativity and growth. You might be experiencing this even if you've worked in the same place for multiple years with the same team. You might just be looking at your own reality and not letting go of things because you suffer in imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome often arises from a combination of high personal expectations, external pressures, and a deep-seated fear of failure. Many people, especially high achievers, set incredibly high standards for themselves, consistently striving for perfection and fearing that any mistake will expose them as frauds. This fear is often fueled by societal and professional environments that emphasize success, making it easy to believe that everyone else has it all together while you are just barely keeping up. Comparing ourselves to others can magnify feelings of inadequacy leading us to overlook our own accomplishments and focus instead on perceived shortcomings. This cycle of self-doubt and unrealistic expectations creates the perfect storm for imposter syndrome, where even the most successful individuals feel like they don't truly deserve their achievements. Let me take you back to the first time I stepped into a leadership role. When I say that, I really mean a management role. Because I think that many of us are leaders even when we don't have a management title. I was managing a dental practice in Middle Tennessee, a job that looking back, I wasn't truly prepared for. From day one, I was faking it. It makes me cringe and it hurts my heart just saying that. I needed the job, but more importantly, I needed the money. So I convinced myself that if I could just get people to like me, I'd be a great manager. I thought leadership was about being liked, and I equated my success with how well I could get along with everyone. But deep down, I knew I wasn't ready for the responsibilities that this job came with. The office environment was chaotic, to say the least. And if you've never been in dental before, you might not have ever heard of some of the drama that happens in those offices. I'm not bringing down the industry, but the drama is real. The dentist at this particular office was involved in drugs, and I'm not going to go into details there. There were affairs between the staff and the dentist. The overall morale was at rock bottom, basically. And on top of that, my regional manager, who was supposed to guide and support me, was anything but a role model. She was filing for bankruptcy, and I witnessed her car being repossessed right in our parking lot. Instead of focusing on the job, she spent most of her time changing her clothes when she got in, doing her hair. She had a curling iron in our treatment coordinating room. She was painting her nails often at the office. She was never there to support me or to show me what good leadership looked like. Instead, I was left to navigate a toxic environment on my own. And maybe you're wondering how I managed in such a situation. Well, let's get real for a minute and I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly what I did in this situation. Feeling completely unsupported, I made a choice that I'm not proud of. I went to our chief operating officer and I started sharing everything I knew about my regional manager. The bankruptcy, the repossession, the time she wasted on personal grooming instead of work. I even repeated the stories that the regional manager had told me about the chief operating officer, trying my best to paint her in a negative light. My goal wasn't to improve the situation or seek guidance. I was simply trying to lower her standing so that I could elevate myself. I wanted to make her look bad, thinking it would somehow make me look better. But this wasn't right. It wasn't ethical. And it was a shortcut that only led to more stress and dissatisfaction. As I look back, I realized this wasn't leadership. It was desperation, driven by fear and insecurity. Instead of focusing on my own growth and learning how to become the leader and the office manager that I needed to be, I was consumed by a need to prove myself at any cost. And that cost was my integrity. This experience taught me that imposter syndrome can push us to make decisions that are not in our best interest. Instead of focusing on growth, I was consumed by fear and comparison. 
I wasn't honest with myself about my capabilities, and that dishonesty led me down a path of self-sabotage. And here's the good part. It was through that experience that I learned what true leadership is. It's not about being liked or taking shortcuts to the top. It's about integrity, self-awareness, and the courage to admit when you're not ready so that you can work on becoming ready, right? Leaving that position was one of the best decisions I ever made because it set me on a path to becoming the leader I am today. One of the most effective ways to combat imposter syndrome is through cognitive reframing, essentially changing the way you think about your thoughts. It's about recognizing those negative voices in your head and actively choosing to see things differently. Now, I'm sure as I'm saying this, you are thinking, well, that sounds really great in theory. What a fantastic idea. Let's just cognitively reframe how we think. But, but how do you do that? One thing I know is that as we were raised as children, we were taught how to think, how to react, what to do in situations we've experienced before. And it's very hard to take a situation that we're negative about and just magically retrain ourselves. So let's look at some examples of how to reframe common negative thoughts. Instead of thinking, I'm not qualified for this role, I want you to choose instead to remind yourself once that thought comes in, I was chosen for this role because I have the skills and experience needed to succeed. When you catch yourself saying, I just got lucky, reframe it. I prepared well. I executed effectively, which led to success. You see, in that office manager role I had, I did have the skill set to do it, but I didn't have the mindset. I let all of my circumstances around me dictate my emotions. I took events and I made them feelings. Events aren't feelings. Feelings are feelings. And I was misplacing everything that I needed to do in that situation. Reframing isn't about ignoring your doubts either. It's about acknowledging them and then choosing to see your situation from a different, more empowering perspective. Over time, this practice helps you build confidence and shift your mindset from one of self-doubt to one of self-assurance. I want to share a story with you about the power of mentorship and overcoming imposter syndrome and building confidence as a leader. There was a time when I was a regional director of operations, tasked with taking over a region where the previous leader had been forced to step down. This company had 30-some dental practices, and at this time, I managed nine of them. This change meant me taking on an additional six locations, and the situation, dare I say it was dire, the team morale was at an all-time low. Mistrust and resentment were literally all the team had. The offices were severely underperforming. The challenges for me, they felt insurmountable. I was consumed with self-doubt. How could I possibly turn things around? I had nine other offices and now I'm getting six on a Monday morning. At the time, I had a mentor, the CEO of our company. He became a profound influence on my leadership journey. He offered me advice that I still use today, and it shaped not only my approach to leadership, but also my perspective on life in many ways. He told me that people need to know that you value them and that you're willing to do the work alongside them. Leadership isn't about telling people what to do. It's about showing them that you believe in their abilities and you're there to support them. This advice was a game changer for me. I realized that this was a season in my life a season that while challenging would be short-lived but would carry me through countless decisions in the future. I made it my mission to get to know each team member personally, spending time in each office, listening to their concerns, and working alongside them to find solutions. Slowly but surely, things began to change. The team started to trust me. And within 90 days, those offices became the most successful in the company. This was a remarkable turnaround something I could have never achieved without the guidance and support of my mentor at the time. However, as profound and amazing of an experience it was to be mentored to get where I was at, it was a season that did come to an end. And I wish today that he was still my mentor, but that season of my life concluded. It stopped, it ended. 
It taught me an important lesson about the impermanence of certain relationships and the need to honor them while they last. When I eventually left that company, I took pride in knowing that I left it better than I found it. But as sometimes happens, I soon learned that the negativity continued after my departure. Friends I made in the company told me how my former chief operating officer made it her mission to discredit my work, to falsify what I had accomplished. And while that stung deeply, I had to learn another valuable lesson, that it's none of my business what others think about me. And that's my encouragement for you too. We can't control what others say or believe, but we can control how we react and whether we allow it to define us. Being a regional director of operations at this company taught me that leadership is about more than just guiding others. It's about guiding yourself with integrity, regardless of what others might say. For instance, when I was managing multiple offices, I constantly worried that I wasn't doing enough or that I wasn't the right person for the job because my sideline team members would talk poorly about me behind my back. Because I heard the water tower chatter. I heard how people didn't like that I was successful. I heard how people thought I was faking it. I heard how people thought there's no way her teams perform like that. But by reframing those thoughts and reminding myself that my unique approach was exactly what my team needed, I began to see my role differently. It wasn't about being perfect. It was about being the leader that my team needed in that moment. This reinforced that leadership is about building trust, empowering others. When you focus on lifting others, you naturally lift yourself as well. And having a mentor to guide you through tough times can make all the difference in overcoming imposter syndrome. When I look back, I realize that what made those offices successful wasn't just my leadership. It was the collective effort of a team that felt valued, capable, and trusted. That's the magic of mentorship and genuine leadership. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've talked about today. Your that's good moment. Imposter syndrome is something many of us experience, and it can have a real impact on how we lead and interact with our teams. But by recognizing it, reframing our thoughts, and building supportive environments, we can move beyond those doubts. Remember, leadership isn't about being perfect. It's about being authentic, honest with yourself, and committed to growth. As we wrap up, I want to leave you with this. Who you allow to pour into you matters, more than you might realize. Mentorship is powerful, but it can either lift you up or hold you back. Are the people mentoring you helping you step into your full potential, or are they feeding into your self-doubt and keeping you stuck in imposter syndrome? It's important to choose your mentors wisely, to seek out those who challenge you to grow, who see your worth even when you can't, and who help you build confidence instead of tearing it down. If you're looking for guidance, I offer individual and team mentoring to help you break through those barriers and become the leader you're meant to be. Remember, you don't have to do it alone. There's support out there, and it's okay to seek it out. Thank you for spending this time with me today. I'm Sarah Beth Herman. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Until then, keep pushing forward, choosing wisely on who pours into you, and don't let imposter syndrome hold you back. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Dentistry Support, the podcast. If you want to get in on the conversation or have something to share, join us on our Facebook group, The Dental Collaborative. Looking to connect or to be a guest? Head over to DentistrySupport.com. Or if you'd like to learn more about your host, Sarah Beth, or maybe you're thinking of starting your own podcast or looking for mentorship opportunities, well, just visit sarahbethherman.com. If you've got just a sec, remember to rate, subscribe, and leave a review for the podcast. That helps us keep growing. Thanks for supporting the show. And we hope you'll join us again in the next episode of Dentistry Support, the podcast.